It is true that God is a restorer. It is true that God can restore. Hallelujah. Such a powerful comfort for the saints. That no matter what you've lost, the mystery, I hope that we'll be able to deal with it, is that everything that leaves you is still on earth. Now, that's a very good news. If it leaves me and it is still on earth, then there is hope for recovery. And scripture says there is hope for a tree. Do you know why there's hope for a tree? Because provided the earth from where it came out from is still there, there is hope for a tree. There are four keys that I wrote here that are prophetic road maps. I wish we had time to walk this as seen in the life of Joseph. But if any one of you in this assembly following online from any part of the world, if you walk through this process, I give you a guarantee by the integrity of scripture, regardless what the situation is, you truly will come out. Are we together? This is where I want you to pray. In one minute, cry and say, Lord, open my eyes. No assumptions. Open my eyes. In the name of Jesus, that that which you are about to show, because many of us are at this point now, haven't explained to you the mystery of the prison, haven't explained to you the mystery of the losses around your life and destiny. Whether it was for a genuine reason or otherwise. I am showing you a prophetic road map by the Spirit that a way out can come if you can see. Are we blessed? Now look up. Please receive with meekness these truths that I want to teach you. The first key I have found, if you want to experience restoration in your life, your family, your spiritual life, your finances, your destiny, the first key to restoration according to scripture is self-examination and evaluation. The first biblical key to experience lasting restoration the power of self examination not just prayer not just fasting not just finding a man of God in that order of priority self examination there is nobody who receives restoration in this kingdom if you cannot sit down and be thoughtful Second Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 5. Help us, media. Second Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 5. Oh dear. Look, let's look at Luke 15. Luke 15. I wrote a scripture there that I can't seem to find. Luke 15 from verse 17 to 20. The Bible talks about the prodigal son. The story of the prodigal son. Remember the story? The Bible says how that that gentleman provided he was staying with his father. He was not satisfied coming under the authority of his father. And he wanted to live life at his own terms. And then scripture reveals that he left and lived a riotous life for many years. Notice lack started when he left his father. Now, the story of the prodigal son is not the story of sinners because it's a family it has nothing to do with sinners number two for your information the story of the prodigal son is the story of two people with the same lifestyle the only difference is one acted out his own whereas the other hid his own in the heart both the elder brother and the old and the younger brother did the same thing the only thing is that the younger brother was fast to act out his own rebellion but the elder brother also had his own hidden there. Are we together now? So the Bible talks about this gentleman who later finds himself with the swine, pigs, eating from them. And then read verse 17, please. The first five words or six words. One to go. And when he came to, 
the Bible never said when an angel appeared to advise him. Listen, human beings have their wills and you can sit down and think through life. Please keep that scripture there. He came to himself. How do you come to yourself? By thinking. There is the voice of your heart. The Bible says, say not in your heart. So you don't just think, you can speak in your heart. He came to himself. He said, how many hired servants? It's called the power of thoughtfulness. If you can take an introspect of your life and your destiny, self-examination. Are we together? Many people never rise from the shackles of life and destiny because they are preoccupied by offense and will not sit down and examine their own lives why am i like this why is my church not growing lord you called me why is it that my pastor continues to prophesy over my life and people testify here every week i am a faithful worker and according to the authority of scripture i'm a bona fide partaker of the grace upon the man of god why is it not speaking in my life he came to himself there are times you need to go for a retreat not just to pray the bible said be still and know there is a kind of knowledge that stillness brings are we together that you go and lock yourself and sit down quietly and say something must be wrong he came to himself january this happened just when i was recovering my wife got sick just when she was recovering my child got sick just when he was recovering no 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 this is more than sickness i see that there is a handwriting of satan wanting to destroy my thoughtfulness it's unfortunate that we live in a world where we are preoccupied by activities and so thoughtfulness now is a luxury but believers hear me in this end time we must trust god for grace to hide away from people if you're a man of God here, respectfully, this is an honest advice. You, you will never be a cutting edge tool in this end time. If you, the, the, the gallancy and the flamboyancy of ministry can deceive us into believing that just because activities are around Joshua Selman, it means we are making progress. We need to sustain the courage and the stamina to go back. In fact, in the spirit spirit the more god honors you he does it by hiding you that everything that is glorious is hidden if all of you is seen by all men you are not powerful and when rebecca saw isaac she veiled herself as a proof that she was a bride befitting for him as soon as she saw isaac the one she would be connected to she veiled herself it is the reason why your heart is hidden it is the reason why the sensitive or comely parts of your body like apostle paul was teaching are hidden don't be embarrassed when god hides you he's hiding you as proof of the value he has for you are we together but we are dealing with self-examination the young man sat down one day and came to himself he said how many hired servants does my father have and i am here feeding with the swine i will arise and i will go to my father he said and i will say father i have sinned against you and against heaven and i am not worthy he had not gone home. he was discussing self-examination that in the name of jesus i will not be a lazy man in this abuja again the Bible Bible says the earth is the Lord's. I know there is a portion for me. I have been giving excuses and saying all my family members are like that. I know my father did not train me. I, I know I did not have the leverage of uncles and aunties. But if I continue to give this excuse, I will find out one day I'm 50 years, 60 years, 70 years giving excuses. From today I make up my mind. Self-examination. This life of disobedience and dishonor to my pastor. Every time he's prophesying, I stand and I say, oh, I'm the one washing his car. And for five years, I've not received any testimony. I come back to myself. I'm coming for this service with my heart open. And if my pastor is prophesying, I will not just see him as my pastor. He is God's apostolic voice to me. 
self-examination fear a man who has sat down to think he's ready to rise listen let me tell you how restoration came to Samaria. I wish we had time. We would have walked scripture tonight. The Bible says there were four lepers. For as long as they were silent and not thinking, they remained on the ground. But when prophecy came, the spirit of wisdom landed on them. And they began to think and contemplate. Why sit we here till we die? They began a conversation. Charlie Paru's theater. Hmm. Let's get up. If we fall into their hands, at least let's take that risk and make meaning out of our destiny. Instead of sitting down and giving excuses, Nigeria is not working. Let me go and look for land at least somewhere. I may not have the money to buy it, but they will not arrest me for seeing. Let me, let me, let me trust God for grace. examination no I'm, I'm, I think Reverend Abba is too busy to see me I need this grace and I keep seeing him in my dreams but I'm sure one day by God's divine mercy he will connect us you are joking you are really joking one day you have to sit down and ask yourself am I ready to sit here in pride or humble myself and pursue like the woman with the issue of blood and you may get up and say I will come and sit in the church here on that day God will say my son please come around and just stroll you see the the prodigal son didn't need to reach home before he met his father that means the father was already walking too but he needed to examine himself and take a step of faith someone say in the name of Jesus please shout it say in the name of Jesus I receive grace to sit down and be thoughtful I kill every excuse over my life my ministry my destiny turn it into prayer in one minute Lord, I'm tired of giving excuses. Why I remain small, why I fail. I'm tired of giving excuses. Why the unction of the Spirit is not upon my life. There are enough anointed vessels for my life to change. Someone is praying. Please be serious. Pray.